Um, <clears throat> okay, got it. All right. So basically, I mean, I think probably lots of you guys are wondering <laughs> who the heck is this person, and I'm still wondering the same thing. Oh my god. Um, I, I, I've known uh, Miss Blackman for a while. I think it's been like 20 years or more. Uh, when I was about, well, I was about your age, probably a little bit older though, probably a little bit older. Uh, so it's been, uh, it's been an ongoing love fest uh, and uh, it evolved into me becoming friends uh, with her and, this is how 20 years later, I ended up here. Um, so basically, I'm from Panama. I, uh, I'm 37, <laughs> soon to be, yeah, <laughs> soon to be 38 years old. Um, I live in Buenos Aires in Argentina. I've been living here for the past uh, 16 years. Um, I, yeah. I went to school in Panama, like I did my whole thing in Panama till I was 21. I graduated from, from college there, well, from the university. Um, and then I came to Argentina for a master's degree. Um, yeah, and then I ended up staying. That was not part of the plan, but it ended up happening. I always knew that I had to to go somewhere else. You know, when you kind of know, if you ever, if you guys ever get that sort of itch of just knowing different parts of the world, do it. Uh, because it's definitely gonna open your eyes um, to a lot of new things. It's great when you read about stuff, but it's even better when you get to experience it uh, in person. And then it's also disappointing. Like I went to Paris, I'm, I'm not gonna kill any dreams, but I went to Paris and the Eiffel Tower is not all that. I know. Uh, <laughs> you, you know what I tell people? I tell people I went to Paris and I was not impressed. And people are like, <laughs> I know. No, no, legit, seriously, I was not in. I mean, and also I feel like they, they Photoshop a lot of these places so they make them seem like nicer and cleaner and then they're not. Um, so yeah, no, and so I've been living in Argentina uh, for a while. Um, yeah, I, I, I became an actor. Well, I didn't become an actor. You don't become an actor. You're always kind of an actor. Um, I, I did some acting in Panama as a child, as one would. Every single time there's, there was something that I could do acting-wise in school, I would do it. Now looking back at, at, at that. Um, but yeah, but I, it wasn't for, well, for my parents who were paying for my university uh, studies, it wasn't like a realistic sort of profession, like a viable thing to do. Um, and so I ended up studying, uh, international business. That's what I studied. It's hard to remember now. That's what I studied. That's what I graduated in, in international business at uh, Panama's Catholic University, also known as USMA. Um, yeah, that was interesting. But then I became an actor. A lot happened in the middle and I became an actor. And I'm like, oh, this is what I was supposed to do uh, for the longest time. And that was when I was almost 30, which is a testament to, you know, always keep searching and try to continue finding what your passion is are not only one passion, you might have a, a million passions and it's always okay to, to pursue them and go for it. Um, and yeah, and I've been an actor ever since. There's been a pandemic in the middle. I don't know if you guys <laughs> are aware of coronavirus. There's, there's stuff going on. And so, yeah, that has, I've focused mainly on my other job, which is the one that uh, pays most of the bills. Uh, I'm a teacher after... Yes. What? You're actually using the word teacher. You're a teacher. Imagine that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> which is ridiculous because, you know, I, I come from a family of teachers. I come from a family of educators. 
but I didn't I didn't like teaching. I mean, I it's it's a lot of responsibility. The impact you have on people, that's 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 a lot of responsibility. So yeah, I guess. And now I'm a teacher. I've been teaching English. Um <laughs> <laughs> which was, which to be honest, was probably one of my favorite uh, subjects back in, in school. Okay, um, Pause. people, I did not teach him English, okay? I know. I taught him chemistry and everybody hated chemistry. So, <laughs> but we were- Yeah, we hated the, I didn't hate chemistry to be honest. Um, I, I was, I didn't like numbers. I didn't like when we had to add up like it involved numbers. If it was adding chemicals and it involved numbers, that part I didn't like. But yeah, but chemistry was fun. And that's true. Most people did not like chemistry. Um, but we liked Enora uh, most of the days. Yeah, we, <laughs> most of the days. Um, yeah, it was something that, uh, and yeah, I didn't learn uh, English from her, but I, but I, I think you always kind of corrected us in a way. Like, yeah, she's always reading. and Chemistry was in English. So in a sense, it was kind of like English class, but just more difficult. Yeah, that, that, is, that is true. I have one, just one brief memory. Um, we sometimes the teacher before her class would get out late. Uh, which, which wasn't our fault, really. But and then she, every every now and then, she would give us like pop up quizzes, uh, because she knew that nobody had studied uh, the day before. And so I remember one time the teacher was late to get out of the class, and she started like giving us the pop up quiz from the other side of the door. So by the time she got in. It was already like question number four. So, so, so those are uh, some of my best memories from high school. Um, yeah, no, and so I've been, I've been living here for a while, uh, for a long time now. I've been living here for longer than most of you have been alive, to be honest. Yep. Um, and it has been a, a trip. It's always, um, I mean, if any of you guys plan on uh, or you know have dreams of studying abroad it's everything that you can imagine the good the bad uh but I wouldn't change it a bit like um it was I mean it's been life-changing for me and uh, I I feel like I I became an independent person like I feel like I was an adult but a lot of things were done for me so after you leave that bubble um, uh, then you kind of start realizing, uh, what adulthood is. Yeah. With the good and the bad. Um, and yeah, uh, as a, as an actor, I've had, uh, the blessing of just doing lots of different things. Um, yeah, I, so PS, I'm not a big fan of like babies or like really young children. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> because I I have a hard time relating. Like it's been such a long time that I've had a hard time relating. And but I started working at one point as an actor, working for musicals. Musicals for like, well, there were children and there were also teenagers. There were like different plays for different age groups. And that was interesting. That was uh that was a fun experience. Um and I got to travel a lot doing that. And yeah, and uh, lots of theater and uh, some uh, ads, some like commercials here and then. That's the trick. If any of you plan on becoming actors, commercials pay a lot. So if you can book a commercial, do it. Um, yeah, and there's not, yeah. Oh, and I have three older sisters. It's very random. I'm jumping from here and there. But I have... <laughs> <laughs> because they have to write about this, right? So it's going to be hard for them to write about this. Right. They have to give me an audio uh, summary. Oh, okay. So I have three older sisters. Um, and two of them live in the United States. And one of them lives in Panama. I'm the youngest of four. 
um, and I'm the only boy in in my family. So yes, that that meant that I was very spoiled uh, for for many many years in my life. And yeah, I I don't know what else to tell you. Um, I think that. Something I've learned recently is that, I mean, I guess you guys, I mean, I don't, I'm not quite sure. What are their age groups? Uh, uh, 12 to 14, oh. more 12 to 4. I don't know if anybody here is 15. Anybody in there 15? Yes? Okay, so 12 okay. to 15. Okay, perfect. So yeah, you guys are, are I, I think looking back at those years, I think for me being a teenager now was sort of figuring out um just where i sort of nothing's going to be clear nothing's going to be set in stone but it's kind of trying to figure out where you want to go like if you don't if you want to be an artist if it's art that you want maybe you you haven't figured out if you want to be a performer um or a writer so it's just kind of trying to to move that needle towards where you want to go uh i also know where you got i mean i lived there my whole life so i know panama's all about just kind of structured and this is what you have to do and you have to to do something that pays the bills and it is true <laughs> you do need money to live but uh it's also better to find uh, something that you like to do that can also pay the bills if you really like something, then you're probably going to be good at it, which probably means that you're going to make money out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and also, yeah, and everybody's just kind of uh, going through their own thing. Like now looking back, I think that I was just, I could have been nicer to people. I could have been kinder, even when people weren't kind. I mean, a lot of people were kind, but you kind of, one always focuses on the, on the, the times i don't know why but as humans we always focus on on what's wrong and not what's right and that's also uh, the same thing with the news when you turn on the news it's all negative so there's there's far more good people in the world than we think it seems like the world is just kind of surrounded by all these bad people but there's far better people they just don't get on the news because mm -hmm. that doesn't sell um so yeah, I think I would have been kinder. I would have been nicer and known that everybody, especially during teenage years, everybody's, you know, going through their own struggles. Like, you know, every family is different. Every situation at home is different. Uh, everyone's focus is different. And yeah, I mean, uh, basically that. I think academically, by the way, when I was a teenager, I was very good. I was very good in school. I should have, I would have been much better had I studied, had I really studied. Um, and that is always great. I'm not going to say don't study. I'm always going to say be the best you can learn uh, because it does open doors. Academically, I got scholarships because of this. I was able to study in other countries. So it does open doors. But if you're academically not a good student, let me tell you that. You're still going to have a fantastic life because I have a lot of uh, ex-classmates <laughs> who, who are living the life, classmates who could barely pass their subjects, who are living the life and living their own truth. And yeah, that makes me super happy. So it's great to learn. It's great to, to know information. But it's also just kind of good to, to not, not, not strive for perfection because that's impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's impossible to be perfect. Um, you have to be you're you're imperfectly perfect in a way. I mean, this is how you were intended to be, uh, and you and you're always only doing the best version of you. You can only do what's best for you at that time. So don't be too hard on yourselves, um, and don't listen too much to what other tells uh, to what other people tell you. Yeah, just. You know, be this is the time to to make mistakes. Uh, just kind of go with it. And I know because I started thinking about this since I also teach uh, 
teenagers around your age. They're the youngest I teach, by the way. Um, and I started thinking and I was like, huh, nobody's really talking about the pandemic and its effect on teenagers. Because in a way, you guys were kind of like the silent minority. Everybody was crazy with the babies at home, the parents, uh, the poor mothers who usually do most of the, of the work uh, in their households. And then I started thinking, I'm like, but nobody's talking about teenagers. How do teenagers vent? What are their outlets? How do they feel about not seeing their friends? Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, whatever you guys have been feeling is valid. It's okay. Uh, yeah. And whenever you need to talk to someone, talk to someone. It's super important uh, to talk to people whenever you feel like you need to talk to someone. I'm, I'm a person who always bottles up everything. So I just keep it to myself and it's not a good idea. Uh, yeah. Looking back at it. So, yeah. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess that. Should they, can, I? They, can ask, they can ask questions too. Oh, okay. Well, actually, they have to because it's the nota de apreciación thing. <laughs> so you're basically forcing them to ask me questions, right? <laughs> I know, but you know, that's the Nora way. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, kids, so who has a question for Mr. Francisco P? And if I'm going to name names, you know, I'm going to name names. Go ahead, Marcela. Um, what is the best thing that you like to do? What is the best thing that I like to do? The best thing that I like to do. Oh, um, I like to sleep, man. I mean, I'm a, <laughs> I like to sleep. I'm not going to even like on top of my list. Like there's, there's probably like cheesecake. Um, yeah, I don't know. Watching the next Marvel movie and then sleeping like on top of that. No, I like sleeping. And the reason is Marcella, because I've, I've learned um, that it's super important to take care of yourself. And so whenever I feel super tired or overwhelmed, um, just by life or the pandemic or whatever, I, I tend to go to sleep when I can, of course, if I don't have to work. <laughs> I don't postpone things for sleeping, but I have learned that sleeping and meditation for me help a lot. So sleeping on the top of that list, always to you know, prioritize sleep. And it's always good for your, it's also good for your skin. Uh, <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> Some of you, I can't see your faces. I'm only seeing foreheads. Marcela, like you. <laughs> I see your forehead. There you Wait, go. so let me ask you something. Is this, is, this, is this an English class? It is. It is an English class. Marcela, let me see your pretty face. There she is. Okay, much better. Denise uh, Fabrega, there's just like a little dot on my screen. Come close, Emily Valencia. Okay. Okay, people, so who has a question? It's actually a, cl a class called Oral Skills in which kids develop their ability to speak English. So what we're doing with this is that I've gotten people from different friends that I have spread out all over with different accents. And so they're trying to see how much they can uh, gather from different accents that they're listening to. And Jana was on too, you know. And Jana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's an ex-classmate of mine. I used to, I used to harass her all the time. Not, not like, not in a, yeah, I used to kind of like bother her a lot. Poor yeah. girl. Yeah, yeah. You have to make fun of her a lot. Such a sweet child and you're so mean. Okay. <laughs> okay, so who has a question? Who's next? Oh, thank you. Diego has a, uh, Diego has a question. Diego, go ahead. Oh my, yeah, my, my lamp is covering Diego. Go ahead, Diego. What's the thing you like the most from Argentina? Oh, that's a good question. So everybody's kind of expecting me to say soccer. Uh, because, well, not Dinora, because she knows me. But I guess. <laughs> And I do like Messi. I do think Messi's the best. I mean, for all Cristiano Ronaldo fans, he's also great. 
but I, I do like Messi. But my favorite thing about Argentina is, um, goodness, uh, yeah, just diversity. It's a, it's a country with a lot of tourism. It's a country with a lot of tourists. A lot of people from different parts of the world come here. And I've, I've, I've had the blessing of meeting lots of them. So for me, now because of the pandemic, it's been difficult because everybody had closed their borders. Um, so Buenos Aires was kind of empty, which was strange. Um, but now they've reopened the borders and I'm starting to see people again. And yeah, it's just basically the diversity of nationalities. Look, I, when I was growing up in Panama, I thought we were it. Well, we are Panamanians. We are, but I thought we were like the best. Oh my God. The best country in Central America, the best in the Caribbean. Look at all our buildings. I used to think all of that. And that is true. It's all great. But also at the same time, you realize that, my goodness, it's such a big world. It's such a huge planet. And um, a good thing about growing up in a small country, you tend to gather a lot of information about bigger countries. Like you're always interested in what's happening in what one perceives more important places. But once you actually visit these places, you encounter a lot of people and you're able to understand them better. I used to, I used to misjudge a lot of things. I'm like, oh, why don't they do that? Why don't the French people do that? They should be able to do that. And then once you meet French people and you talk to them, you're like, oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, meeting people in Argentina has been just uh, the best, I mean, uh, for me, yeah. Mm. It is a very interesting country. It is. Except for the people trying to touch my hair. The rest of it is really nice. I, I actually... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did that. I have a friend, I have a dear friend who used to be my yoga instructor. And he is from Cologne. And he has a huge Afro, Germain. And yeah, people, he used to, he used to get really angry because when we would go out like dancing, like people would be would just directly grabbing it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, you know, not only that, I mean, they were also, that was just like at the beginning of when cell phones had cameras and people would just take out their cameras and snap pictures of me on the street. I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> <Let's do this." laughs> but yeah, it's a nightmare. It's a lovely, yeah, well, I mean, context, the context is that there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of Black people in Argentina. Not a like lot. Like, walking on the street, it's just, not, not because they're not welcoming, they're lovely, but it's just historically, it was a, normally, like, a, not a country with, because it's cold during the winter, and normally, I mean, Black people tend to stay away from cold weather, like when they can, you know, it's uh, it's just like a cultural thing. It's like, yeah. And so, and yeah, here they, it's a lovely country. It's a country of, of a lot of contrast, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, modernity in our everyday life, the way we deal, we understand the world, but also kind of very nostalgic because of course they are the inventors of tango. And there's a lot of that old antique vibe happening in the whole sort of play. They've managed to, to preserve, which is something that I, I admire from them. They've managed to preserve their culture uh, and then still manage to evolve with the time. So that's always interesting. Uh, Who's next? Who has a question? Sean, Sean, Sean. Claude. And what is the the um the thing that you most like about acting oh that's a great question sean uh <laughs> to, to which i don't know if i have the answer no i what do i like about acting it's the rush not not rushing like i like being prepared but it's the it's that rush you get through your body before you go on stage it's hard to describe um I was, I'm, believe it or not, I'm an introvert, uh, but I pose as an extrovert all the time. And I'm just, I'm always kind of like cringy on the inside. I'm always like, uh, 
you know, uh, I'm gonna. There's gonna be an audience. There's gonna be people. Even when I used to to speak in public in in high school, um, I also took a public speaking course. So if you guys have the chance of doing that, it's always super helpful. It'll give you tools to relax because I know that not everybody in high school is super out there. There's a lot of shy people. Big ups for my. <laughs> my shy people in the room my fellow shy Uh, (laughs) yeah but you you grow out of it um no it's that rush i i swear it's it's you go on stage and you know when you know somebody has paid even if they've paid a dollar to see you it's somebody who's invested money their money to see you do whatever it is you're doing on stage so it's that sort of responsibility but also the feedback you get, the good or bad feedback you get from the audience. It's that sort of adrenaline that I get from acting. And I also know that a lot of people get that adrenaline from from other things in life. Uh, You know, so if you find that, if you find that adrenaline doing something you like, you know, it's, it's, you're in the right path uh, for sure. (laughs) I think Owen had his hand up. Owen, did you have a question? Uh, how do you feel being away from your family for a long time? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you have Argentine family. What was the last part? I don't know. You, you don't know if I have a what? Argentine family. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, good question. Thanks, Owen. I. It was hard, man. It was really hard. I'm not going to lie, especially at the beginning, because my uh, the master's degree I came to, to study here was for two years. So I'm like, OK, I'll do this for two years and I'll wrap it up and I'll go back to Panama. That was the original plan. Um, but those two years, I was a, I was a kid, man. I was I was 21. I graduated from university and a month later I was living in Argentina. I didn't know how to wash my clothes. I didn't know. My mom, my mom taught me how to make rice. She, at least, she's like, at least you'll know how to make rice and you're not going to starve to death. So I learned how to make rice. But I didn't know how to cook. I was pretty lame um, when I got here. So it was difficult the first couple of years. It's also difficult when you're away and like somebody in the family gets ill or something happens Mm -hmm. and you're unable to to come back home for it it's uh it's hard but also um it forms character for me because i had to to be here i'm like okay if you miss your family they're a phone call away and also we didn't have smartphones back this is like 2005 so there it was kind of like the beginning of smartphones. So there was no WhatsApp, no video call. There was Skype um, to give you an idea. And that was even later, a couple of years later. Um, yeah, no, it was hard, Owen. But I think for me, and this is just a testament to, to, to growing up, the when life is easy, it's it's great. I mean, everybody wants to live an easy, breezy life. But when life gets hard, that's when you learn the most. For me, that those were the moments where I like, okay, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to be on, on my own in a foreign country? Because I had nobody here. I had to grab my body, my sick body, every time I got ill, every time I had a cold, I had to go to the doctor alone by myself. It's kind of sad. But, but yeah, but I, I'm like, okay, yeah, people do this. People, some people don't even have access to go to a doctor. So something I've learned from Denora in the last couple of years is to, to count my blessings because, you know, uh, I am deeply blessed and yeah. And so are all of you I mean, the fact that we're even able to have this conversation via zoom and exchange ideas, mind boggling. Yeah. yeah, that didn't exist when we were kids. Well, not when I was and neither when you were. So, yeah. 
I mean, if you guys saw our computer classes when I was your age, it was very, it was very like Windows 95. Like you must have read about this in books. It was very back in the day. It's like, oh, let's let's learn how to use how to use the Internet Explorer. Like this were our class back in the day. But when I was in high school for the computer class, we didn't even have computers. We just had drawings of what computers were like. They're like, oh, these are, <laughs> it was ridiculous, you know. And to think that now. This is the CPU, like they would show you photos. Like this is a keyboard. This is what it's supposed to look like, yes. No computers, but we got the class anyway. <laughs> Who else has a question? Come on, girls. Yes, Francisco, and then Christian, and then Alondra. Oh, I like his name, Tokayo, yes. <laughs> Go ahead, friend. Um, I, I would like to know how old are you, because you were saying your age. And I am very confused, because you look young, but uh, you were saying that at one moment you were 13 and then 20, and I don't understand Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Sorry. Yeah. It's because I'm jumping, Francisco, so it's hard to follow. Um, no, I'm 37, almost 38. I'll be 38 in a month, less than a month, actually. Um, I have not planned anything for my birthday yet. We'll see. Um, no, I got to Argentina when I was 21. So I've been here for over 16 years. That's what I, what I meant. But I am 37. And I look young because I am drinking from whatever Dinora is drinking, which is a fountain of youth and lots of water and rest because she's older than me and she looks about my age. So. Oh, thank you. I'm 52. <laughs> <laughs> Who did I, next? Christian. I think Christian had another question. Yeah. I'm not looking back. Go ahead, Christian. Hi. Uh, what is an important uh, tip or advice as an actor? when you are controlling your emotions during a performance? Yeah, thanks, Christian. I, look, um, as an actor, you, you're going to be put a lot of times into like a specific role, which is okay if you play along. Like, for example, I'm usually like the skinny sort of funny friend. I'm usually like the funny best friend. Uh, so for me, because of that, I, it's hard to control emotions because we're human. Uh, if you're prepared, if you know your lines, you can play with it. You, you can, it's a lot of improvising. Acting is a lot of just saying yes to what is happening in the situation. It's kind of like in life. Um, you're just kind of rolling with the punches. So whenever I, I also... As an actor, I like watching other actors break character. Like whenever they can't control their laughter, those are the best moments for me. <laughs> because I know that there's that they're fighting against these emotions. They're trying to not laugh. And you know, as you know, when you try to not laugh and you want to laugh, it makes you want to laugh harder. Uh, so for me, I just, um, if it happens, it happens. I go with it and I try to incorporate it into the scene. What I never want to do is kind of like get off scene, you know, just get off the stage. That's kind of rule number one in acting. You're, you're never supposed to, to abandon the ship. Uh, so you go with it, you go through with it, and you do the best you can. So it's kind of like a, a lesson on just living life. You, you do the best you can with what you got. And yeah, no, but it, it's hard. It's hard. Um, it's hard if you start laughing and you're supposed to be crying, for example. <laughs> which can sometimes happen, like, because you'll find yourself in this situation where the material will take you to a sad place and you're there, but then you're looking at the other person and the other person is kind of crying and then it becomes funny again. Like for me, a lot of the times when I'm watching a, like a really sad movie, I'll start laughing in like the strangest moment and people will stare at me. But it's because for me, there's something uh, so beautiful about human emotion and intensity that it, just, it makes me cackle. Like I, I, I laugh and I laugh. It's just because we're all, we're all kind of silly 
we're all living in an absurd world with absurd rules. So we're just making the best we can of it. So I just laugh at it half of the time. Yeah. Okay. But I am good. I'm good. At, I'm good at keeping face. Normally, I am good at not breaking character. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Alondra, you had a question. Yep. My question are: What is the hardest thing about being an actor? Wow. And why? Good. And why? Good, Alondra. Yeah, the hardest thing about being an actor is rejection. Because you kind of had to get used to it from, from day one. Because um, there's going to be 99 times when they tell you no. And this is kind of like, you know, just things to apply in life. You're going you to have to try and try and try. And a lot of the times you're going to, you know, I've, I've had, if I could tell you about bad auditions, if I could tell you about just moments when I've rushed through or where I understood that they wanted something different and I acted something completely different. Um, it's rejection. It, it is hard, very, it's still hard because uh, as humans, we want people to, to like us. There's like this innate sort of necessity for, for people to, you know, for our parents to like us, for validation. We always want to make... Uh, even if we don't get good grades, like deep down inside, we want to get good grades. Like we want that sort of appreciation. So it is hard. Uh, rejection is hard. And as an actor, there's many actors, as you know, in the world, there's millions of actors. And we're all looking for the same thing, which is just uh, not, be, not becoming fam famous, never the, the objective. It's being able to, to live off of acting. Mm. Uh, so only a very small number of people do it, um, but we all definitely try it because when you when you want to do something, when it is your passion, you keep doing at it. But yeah, rejection for sure has been difficult because it kind of messes a lot with your with your self validation. Like you think that when people say no, that that it that it has something to do with you. And a lot of the times people saying, no, it's just maybe not in, in acting, for example, maybe it's just not, you're not the person that they envisioned for the role, that they imagined for the role. Um, maybe it's just not your time or you weren't ready, you know, or maybe it's just life uh, pushing you away from a bad situation. There's been many times in my life where I've learned that it was better for people to say no to me at that time because looking in hindsight i'm like wow yeah I, that that saved me from probably like a negative situation mm -hmm. so a lot of the times when they say no just be like okay it has nothing to do with you and don't let it be like um don't let other people's opinions be the how you value yourself mm -hmm. uh basically that yeah Okay. This rejection is hard, yeah. We have time for one more question. Who's it gonna be? Tracy, go ahead. Okay. When did you decide that you want to become an actor? Um, good question, Hazy. I I think I always kind of knew uh in a way. Yeah, like well, I mentioned before, I whenever there was like a school choir, I was I always knew I wanted to be an artist more than an actor. School choir, I was there singing. Uh, if there was like a choreography in school, I was there dancing. Um, if there was like whatever they did, that was mildly artistic because, as you guys know, um, Panama now now it's. It's kind of blossoming, but Panama has a has a very small artistic community. Now it's getting bigger, and that gives me hope. But back then, it was so it was so small that there were not a lot of opportunities for me to just be like, "Oh, this is gonna be it." And so I kind of always knew since I was a kid. Um, so, but yeah, but I didn't really come to terms with it. Which like, oh, this is really what's what I want to do till I was like 29. So I went through the whole gamut of like 
graduating. You know, I did very well in my university. I got a master's degree. So I did that whole thing all together. And then I'm like, okay, uh, I, I'm done pleasing everybody else. Now I'm going to start pleasing myself. Uh, so, yeah. Do I wish I had skipped all that pleasing everybody else portion of it? Yes. I wish I would have just stuck to my gun. But, you know, those were the cards I was dealt. And I am blessed to even have found it later on in life and to still be able to do it. Yeah. yeah. The negative thing is that still in Panama, if a kid says to his parents, I want to be an actor or I want to be a singer or whatever, they're still going to shoot it down. So, yeah, there are a lot of kids, and I know a whole bunch of them personally, who end up studying to be doctors or architects or whatever because their parents said you're going to starve if you become an actor. So I think that's the, men the mentality has to change in order for the community to gain, you know, become a lot larger. Now, there are some of them right here in this, in this class who are struggling between do I follow my dream or do I go to med medical school? So, yeah. Well... Life is too short. I mean, that's that's the thing. Life is too short. I I mean, you never know. I mean, you hear about especially during COVID. I think we during COVID times we 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 also realized how how short life is. Mm -hmm. And uh for me, I'm like if I die tomorrow, I'm not going to die tomorrow. But if I die tomorrow, um I want to be able to to, you know, to die doing whatever I like. I mean, it's not a life lived for another person. is not a life worth living. Like you should never live your life on, on basis of what other people want you to do or tell you to do. You should always just kind of, as long as you're not hurting other people, you should always just kind of do uh, whatever you want to do. I mean, it's, yeah. it's your life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here, Francisco Porra. This has been fun. <laughs> fun. I'm so I'm always happy to see you, and uh, thank you for all the you know the tips and like, the little gems that you've poured into these kids. I'm sure they appreciate it, and I'm sure they remember it. I'm gonna send you the link of this amazing interview in a. Few Did you take a photo of this? Because I wanna. You should. You should take a photo and then just kind of send it. To I did. I will. Take, I already took a photo. I don't know how you look. I make sure I look. Yeah, good. I, that, I was about to say you're gonna take a photo when I'm like, <laughs> basically, yeah. That happened. Let me check. No, you actually look cute. You look great. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna send you the photo and the link on for the YouTube video. Thank you so much. Alrighty. Well, it was great seeing you guys. Uh, you know. Keep going at it. I know living in Panama is hard, but it's much better now and it is getting better uh, and it is hot. Keep yourself hydrated and get some sleep as well. <laughs> Bye.